Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, our question comes from Mark Stimmel, uh, KD9RSI. And <clears throat> this is a rough one. Uh, Dave, I have a customer with a very expensive electronics installed in his house. His neighbor's antenna, 50 feet away, is a ham operator, amateur extra. The question is, can ham radio cause interference with the Lutron Radio RA2? His lights are turning on and off randomly, usually around midnight. Operator possibly is running an amp. Okay, um, he's, he states in here 434 megahertz, which is right in the middle of the ham band. And, uh, but I went and looked up the Lutron Radio RA2. The Lutron system is one of those smart home apps and consists of a great big pile of hardware. And uh, it is uh, uh, like light switches and uh, you can turn appliances on and off and change the room lighting and all that sort of thing. It's a very sophisticated system and it is not cheap. Now, one of the problems um, with this system, apparently it's susceptible to interference. 434 megahertz is square in the middle of the 70 centimeter ham band. And if this system was built using that frequency, that's the problem of the manufacturer uh, using that frequency, they should not be. But when I looked at it, it looked like uh, the Lutron system was using Wi-Fi uh, to connect all of its parts and pieces, which is much more common today. For example, this wireless antenna I'm wearing, and I've got a transmitter in my pocket, actually works over Wi-Fi. The same kind of Wi-Fi that you use in your home for your computers, printers, so on and so forth. Okay. So the Wi-Fi is probably in the 2.4 gigahertz band. It might be in the 5 gigahertz band. But it should not be getting interference from um, a 70 centimeter ham signal. However, if the 70 centimeter ham signal is uh, broadcasted quite a bit of power, and with an outside antenna, 5 to 10 watts is more than sufficient, Broadcasting at 100 watts uh, for FM on uh, 70 centimeters is just throwing power away. You can reach the horizon with 20 watts. And that's all the further you can get anyway because it doesn't bend very much to follow the curvature of the Earth. Now what could be happening is something called fundamental overload. Where because there are wires running around in this system, uh, there could be enough uh, energy input from the 434 megahertz that it just swamps the receiver front end. Now, one of the things is the signals that this sends to uh, its equipment. There's a, a repeater uh, is, is one of the boxes in the equipment and it communicates via Wi-Fi with other things. If there is, for example, a picked up RF coming in the power cord, uh, you could have a problem with instability. Now, for the Lutron, <clears throat> for the Lutron system to uh, actually uh, turn something on and off, there are coded messages sent back and forth. So just manually kerchunking the uh, 70 centimeter equipment cannot get that encryption into the equipment. So I doubt very much that it's the cause of uh, the problem. Now one thing you can do is get these little um, snap-on bead things. Let's see if I can get this open. These snap-on ferrite beads, okay? You can see them down in there. And this can go and they make these in a variety of sizes. Put this around the power cable going into all of the Lutron devices. 
uh, and see if that helps satisfy uh, the RFI problem. If the ham is transmitting in the ham band, he shouldn't be interfering with this device. It could very well be something else. Uh, what could interfere with it is other Wi-Fi equipment in the house. Because where your internet comes into the house, however it gets into the house, it goes to your home router. And your home router sends it out. It's got its own wireless and so on. And if some of those wireless devices, like a printer, are on the same wireless channel, and yes, there is such a thing, are in the same wireless channel, you could get interference that way. And that can be happening easily. So I'm sorry to hear about your customer. Um, I would uh, try uh, to correlate it with this guy transmitting and the neighbor getting interference. If he's not transmitting and the neighbor's getting interference, then you know it's not the guy transmitting, okay? If, however, every time you transmit, the lights flash on and off, um, then the guy transmitting should reduce power to something sufficient to reach the horizon, which would be about 20 watts. He can try moving his antenna higher or over to the other side of his house or something like that. Um, or you can try the ferrite bead approach. So good luck. Um, I would recommend that uh, diplomacy and uh, soft speaking are the order of the day. Anybody who gets on their high horse and starts to say, I spent a lot of money for this and you're interfering with it, needs to read the equipment's FCC statement. And I'll show you what that is. Here's the 7300 manual and we're going to look in the back and you now it's not in the back is it it must be in the front the FCC information okay now you look at this FCC information here and what it tells you is this um, this equipment has been tested, yada, yada, yada. Uh, this equipment generates, uses, and can radiate radio frequency energy. And if not installed and used in accordance with the instructions, may cause harmful interference to radio equipment. However, there is no guarantee that interference will not occur in a particular installation. If this equipment does cause harmful interference to radio or television reception, uh, the user is encouraged to try to correct the interference. Now, um, one of the things they say in the FCC statement in reception equipment is that the equipment cannot interfere with other equipment and must accept any interference it gets from other equipment, such as ham equipment. So you can see here where neighbors can quickly get into... Uh, a contest that will go nowhere uh, appeals to the FCC will likely go nowhere um, you can call Lutton and tell them that their equipment has an RFI problem but that often won't help so it just has to be a cooperative effort between the ham and the neighbor and see what you can do uh, to first test that it really is the ham doing the interfering, and if it is, what you can do to minimize that interference. Okay, so I hope that helps. This is a rough uh, problem. This is the giveaway for the month of December, okay? Uh, actually, you can start sending your cards and letters uh, as soon as we are done with the uh, November giveaway, but this will be for December. Uh, it'll be given away on the live stream on New Year's Eve, okay? And, uh, of course, you don't need to be listening on that day. And uh, what I'll do is I'll draw the number and, and just put it into the envelope from there. This is an antenna that is similar in concept. Um, well, no, it's not similar in concept at all. 
This antenna is done quite differently from the one we just gave away. This is the MFJ17754, which is an eight, I'm sorry, 40 and 20 meter antenna. It's trapped, trapped antenna, so it's two band antenna. It covers all of 20 meters and uh, about half of 40 meters, and you can pick the half of 40 meters that you want. Nice little antenna. Uh, this thing is 42 feet long, and it covers 40 meters, so that's really nice for um, a situation where you don't have a lot of room uh, in your backyard. Okay, so this is it. Now, to do the... Uh, to do the giveaway, what you could do is you send a card or a, a letter if you want. Let me get an example of a card here. Oh, I thought I had one. Yeah. Here's a, a card that um, came too late it's for its giveaway. So you'd put KE0OG Dave Kassler, uh, giveaway number five. P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. And on the front of it, uh, put the return address where you want that thing sent. And also put your phone number. And the reason for the phone number is in case I have any questions. I do not need your email address or anything else. And when I am done with these, they all go in the trash. Okay. The entry must reach me by New Year's Day. The day before, while the post office is, I'm sorry, New Year's Eve. I'm not sure if the post office is open New Year's Eve, but I will go down uh, on New Year's uh, Eve and pick up all the entries. Any entry received after that is late and won't be considered. Because the post office is being so slow, and because this is the holiday season, I highly recommend that you get your entry in the mail during the first half of December, so it won't arrive late. And uh, again, the giveaway is an MFJ17754, and uh, is a nice MFJ antenna. Uh, they cost less than $100. This is one of the antennas I got as a candidate for the reference antenna. Uh, I didn't um, I didn't pay for this antenna. MFJ sent it to me for evaluation. Um, the reference station antenna is the MFJ 2010, uh, which does a better job. Um, put the drawing in there and then says, if you'd like to support this channel financially, which really helps us keep going, uh, please go to decastler.com slash support and look for a way that might work for you. And until we next meet, 73.